Okay. So in the last screencast, I went over basic setup, a little bit about materials, loading a texture, creating your own material. Um, and this one is going to be, it's going to, it's going to really speed up on what we're going to learn. Uh, I'm going to introduce game state and we're going to do a little bit about rotating the object and some game input by pausing the game state so that the rotated object stops rotating. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and actually create a new package here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just right click on my package, go new, Java package, and I'll call this new Java package state. And I think the easiest way to explain what state is for the JMonkey engine is that if, if let's say you, you want to build like a level <coughs> and you're going to build level one, you have all these interactions with level one that you don't really want to bleed into other levels. You also have specific objects in level one that you don't want to have shared with other levels. Game state or app state specifically um, lets you really narrow down and, and get all the scene graph objects or your code specific to that isolate it to one area. Um, the other benefit of state app state is that you can enable and disable app state so that when your render or your logic is happening it, it can choose to stop or continue. Um, so it's a good way to throw in extra functionality say such as um, start menus, um, if you want to do like a weather system, you don't really care if the weather system's inside of a specific level, then you do a, another app state for that. Um, if you're doing a mobile game and you want some type of joystick to control overlaid onto your, onto your, your game, all the, all the management of the code and the GUI can be in that app state. Um, and so what this lets you do is when you build an app state that's not specifically say such a, a level, you can reuse it. And a good example of app state that is available here now is actually the initial. So when we hit play, there's a couple app states that are actually already being used that you're probably not aware of. So I'm going to hit continue. The first app state is the actual fly cam. So this, all, all these controls and everything else, this is an app state. Uh, the other app state is the, uh, the stats that you see on the, on the left bottom side about the frame buffers, triangles, and so on. You can actually press F5 to enable and disable that. That is another piece of code that runs in, in a separate app state. And you can actually pull in that app state or query for that app state, see if it exists. And if it does, go ahead and enable or disable it outside of it. And I'm not going to show you how to do all that right now, but basically what we're going to do is just create our first quote unquote level. Um, and that will have, we'll move what is in the current initialization here into that app state. So we're going to call this level zero one state. Okay. And there, there's going to be some boiled boilerplate to this, so I'm going to try to make it as uh, easy as possible. So we're going to take this class and we're actually going to need to extend abstract app state uh, the type and I can just do alt enter wait, what am I missing here? Exp Oh, I forgot to spell extend wrong. Extends. I'll enter and then add import. And then for this, we're going to want to do a couple things here. Let's see. Let's first start off with the constructor. So we're going to say public level. And inside this constructor, we're going to throw in the simple application. Yep. Now this this uh, press Alt Enter on to import. Um, this can actually just reference your main, but if you're going to be reusing this um, this app state uh, across multiple games, 
then you probably want to at least target the simple application since most games are just going to extend this anyways. Why it doesn't share the same zoom level? That's weird. Okay. So let's see here. The next thing we're going to want to do is grab the root node because what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a local node to manage the scene data within this app state so that when we want to throw away level one, all the scene nodes and meshes and everything else kind of get thrown away with it. It's uh, kind of like an easier way to manage a piece of the scene without having to have to think about everything else that's in the scene. So we're, we're going to need the root node. We want to say root node equals app dot gets root node. And that's not initialized. So we're going to say alt enter and we're going to create the field. So now we have the, the private final. Next thing we're going to want to do is actually override an initialization. This is different from the constructor. Constructor is when you basically set up the, the object. Uh, this is called after afterwards. So this is going to be this is where the 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 box the key, the box that we made all this other code is going to actually go. Um, so we're going to say we're going to add the annotation of override, and we're going to say public void. Uh, initialize. Oh, there's not. Let me. Can I get this auto complete? No, I can't. Okay, so it's going to be app state manager state manager, and then we're going to do application. Uh, let's just do app. And again, you can just hit uh, Alt and Enter. And we're going to add the import for that. You can Alt Enter one more time to add the app state import. Um, okay, so the, the, what we're going to do here is actually just call the super. Super means that we're, because we're extending this and we're overriding this method. Uh, the current method that this uh, calls won't be called anymore. So then we need to say super dot initialize, and we just throw in the, the same same information. Now I, I didn't type all this out, but all you have to do is to say super, and I do uh, just control space dot initialize. So I did another control space. And then just, uh, why is this not completing? Okay. Yeah, I was just doing control space there, so you, you can actually not have to type all this stuff in. Um, okay, so then what we're going to do here is we're just going to create a, a local node. So here's we have the root node up here. We're actually going to create a local node. This way, everything that we throw here can be thrown, um, garbage collected and thrown out when we unload or basically delete this state. So we're going to say local node equals. Actually, no, we're not going to say that. We're going to say root node. Root node dot attach child and we're going to say local root node now this doesn't exist so we can actually just say create field and this is giving us the um, control space there again or I'll enter and this is giving us uh, a spatial and we don't want that we actually want just a node so I'm just going to delete that and say node um, and we need to initialize this, so we, we can either do it here in a constructor or just on the same line. I'm going to do it right here for now. New node, and we're going to give this node a special name called level1. 
and it's just going to complain about private final crap stuff like that so you can put it there if you want um let's see here the, the reason you'd want to just add final to a lot of this stuff is that if you if you're actually not um, changing this variable final is kind of like a little optimizer um, it also kind of does some safety nets so you're not able to, to change it um, so I'll leave it as is why is this complaining did this override wrong what in the world I am overriding this I spelled initialize wrong. Holy cow. Okay. So that's why I was complaining about that. And the last chunk to all of this is we're going to do another override. And this is going to be our cleanup function. So public void. And then we're going to say root node dot detach and then local root node. So here's what I was saying where we're creating this, this specialized instance or specialized sub node inside the root node that we're calling local root node. And when we say goodbye app state or just get rid of me, um, it'll say just, okay, we're going to take everything that we were managing and remove it from the root node. So this way, when you go from level one to level two, you don't have to do all this manual cleanup yourself. You can just call the app state to be deleted and this will come and happen. But we still need to do super dot clean up because we're overriding the cleanup function. And this is the kind of core thing we, this like the, the very basic of what you need for app, an app state. Um, you, you don't really need a local root node if you don't want it, but I, I highly recommend it. This way it's a bit easier to, to manage when you're inside the actual root node. Um, and this way, uh, if you also have like naming issues or conflicts, it's it's going to be it's not going to happen because you're inside the your own little section of the scene graph. You're not in the global scene graph per se. Okay, so let's go ahead and start to move that logic um, into from main into here. So we have our initialization. We're going to take all this. We're going to cut it out. We're going to go to our initialization. We're just going to go a couple lines down and say paste. And this actually lets us safely just import this in, which is all great and handy, except for the fact that we don't have Asset Manager. So you can actually just uh, pull that in as well. So we can say Asset Manager. equals app dot get asset manager and we're gonna go ahead and just do create let's do a alt enter there and then say create fill field again and now we have access to our asset manager now we have to do one more thing which is when we go back to our main we need to set up the app state and that's actually extremely easy. All we need to do is say state manager dot attach. And we're going to say new level one. And we're going to pass in this because that's our app. And that's it. So then we can hit play. And it should show us exactly what we saw in the last screencast. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. I know that was a lot, but that's the fundamentals of app state. Now, there's the next piece, which is how do we rotate this on update? 
there is there's so there's a simple update simple render don't even bother knowing about this for now um, so in your app state you we actually are just gonna create another function here um, so we're gonna create a, an update fu function not create but we're gonna override the update function so we're gonna do another annotation of override and this is gonna be public void update and this is going to have the float of tpf now i'll go into a little bit of what tpf it means but uh, what we want to do is get access to the box and there's two ways to do this um, the easiest way to do it if you're going to be accessing it's so often is just to take this um, and move it into a, a field rather than it being a local uh, a local variable. The other way of doing that, so uh, that was basically move it up here into its own definition. But the other way that you want to do this is possibly like if you're loading up uh, a scene graph, you, you need to have some way to query for it. And there's just a lot of different ways to query this scene graph. Um, but because we know it's a direct descendant of local root node, we can say, um, we can say, geom, geom equals local root node dot get child, and we can actually specify what we had called it, which is just box. So box, and there's always the lovely option of that it does not exist actually let me do uh, create a local variable here and so there's 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 always the option that it does not exist it could be null so we can say if jump if this is not equal null then we can go ahead and actually do the following so then we can say rotate and we can use quaternions, vectors, or just this one, which is specifying float, float values. And the rotation is in um, decimals. It's not in actual angles. So if you wanted to do 45 uh, degrees, you'd actually need to represent that in a float value because they are in, um, it, it's falling off of me right now. It starts with an R. Uh, let's see, rotation in. No, I'm, I'm not going to bother with that. So um, what we're going to want, all this is going to do is really just continue to rotate over time. Um, so we can say uh, TPF 0, 0. Actually, we're going to say 1. Ooh, this is going to spin really fast because this is going to run a gazillion times a second. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually just create a variable here called speed, how fast actually to rotate. And we're going to give this the initial of 0.1f and we're just going to pass that into the rotation. So in every frame, we're going to rotate this an additional 0 0.01 units per second, I guess, or per, per frame. Um, I'm going to get to why this is extremely important in game development, but I'm just going to show you um, visually, and you, you can run along and do this too. I don't know how well this is going to show in a screencast, but when you hit play, wait for this to compile. Um, I'm going to turn off VSync and continue. Hmm. Why is this not updating? Did I do something wrong? Aha! That's right. When we copy and pasted that code, guess where this box actually got attached to? It got attached to the root node. So, what we need to do is change this to local root node. So now when we hit play, compiling, 
it now rotates. It's a little slow and that's definitely fine, but it's rotating pretty constantly. And if you noticed, um, it's speeding up a little more. It really depends on the number of frames per second, the number of times it's being triggered to really get the speed up and going. So if I stop this, why is this not stopping? Okay, and I hit play again, and instead of having VSync turned off, and I turn it on, all, well, all VSync means is go with the refresh rate of your monitor. So my monitor could only refresh up to 60 seconds or 60 frames per second. Uh, so that's only going to run at 60 frames per second as constantly as it can. If you're doing anything like garbage collection, which you may not have any control over, or you're doing any complex thing that's going to cause the frames per second to dip, your box is going to rotate fast and slow, slow and fast, and that's really not ideal. Um, it's okay to drop frames. It's not okay to have your logic not be able to respond to a, um, a, a the drop frames itself. Like if you have logic that depends on the update cycle triggering, um, then you need to be able to take the difference in time and pull that in. So we'll go ahead and stop that. So what does TPF mean? Well, in many other games, it's usually called Delta. Uh, but basically it's time um, per frame. I don't know why they called it that and why it, why they initialized the TPF, but the reality is is that this is the time since the last time update was called. So instead of just blanketly calling 0 0.01, which we're going to want to change because now we're going to introduce this, we're going to say... Uh, we're going to keep that speed there, but we're going to actually going to multiply that against the TPF. And what this allowing us to do is to, if we were to get uh, the perfect separation between one frame and another, it would be constant. But if something took a little bit longer, then we kind of need to increase how much of the rotation we were going to do um, on the next frame so that the rotation doesn't look jumpy or jittery or faster or slower than it did previously. So again, we just hit save, play, and you can play around with this now. You can turn your, um, your VSync on and off and stuff like that to see that it's visually rotating at the same rate, even when you're, um, you're, your scene is kind of running. Another thing to, to think about with frame rates specifically, and you can set this outside of the application. You don't need to turn on VSync or every time. Um, is if if you're rendering your game as fast as possible, you know, without me screencasting, this thing gets up to like 400 plus frames per second. Um, while that's nice to run at, it's stressing your CPU out immensely. Um, every time you render a frame, that data from your scene needs to get to the GPU. So you're spending CPU cycles just getting, just transferring that data over, saying, okay, render this, render this. So you usually do want to cap your, your frames per second at around 30 to 60. If you're doing a really high twitched game, you definitely want to shoot for 60. If you're doing kind of like a real-time strategy game that doesn't require you know, milliseconds of a, a response, you can probably go much lower for frame rates. And that usually means that you can have increased logics or there's other stuff that can take up the CPU time. You're not having to waste it on just sending frames to, to be rendered. Okay, so we have our game state. We have a rotating box. The next part we're going to want to do is introduce uh, a pause. And that's going to jump into input management. It's kind of a, a deep, a lot to take in, I know. But for this one too, we're also going to jump into input management and enabling and disabling the state and what it kind of means for the input management. So this is the first thing we want to do here is actually get the input manager from the app. So we're going to say input manager. Let's spell it correctly. 
Oh, come on. Get input manager and alt enter, create field. And then down here, we're going to go ahead and actually just do inputs manager dot add mapping. So what a mapping is, is let's say you have a, like a, a pause button and you, you may might want to use it to customize what this pause button is used. Maybe the letter P, maybe escape. Um, you can decide on that, but basically you, you reference the key and then you give it a, a mapping, a named mapping. So we're calling this pause and we're going to say new key trigger key input dot key p okay um actually let me on let me do that so now it, instead of having to keep hitting like alt enter alt enter to to fix these imports you can also just do um source and then fix imports and that should fix it for you automatically. If there's any type of conflicts, it'll pop up a little dialogue to, to figure that out, which is a nice little tip. Okay, the other part to this is we want to take that mapping and apply it to a listener. So we're going to say input manager dot add listener. And we're going to call this action listener. And we're going to use the mapping of pause. Um, there's two types of listeners that, uh, that I'm aware of at this point, which is an action listener and an analog listener. An action listener just basically means, is the key pressed, yes or no, a Boolean true or false. An analog listener is, let's say you have like a, a controller joystick and you move the joystick just a little bit to the right. You're going to get a feedback of, yes, it's being pressed, but and how much of a value is it being pressed. Okay, so now we actually need to create this action listener. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, down here say private final action listener. We're going to take that from the input controls. We're going to say action. Now, I'm not sure what JVM you all are using, but this is if you're using like Java 8. Uh, you can actually just use Lambda expressions as a much um, easier way than typing all this out. Okay, so now that I have that there, let's just do all enter. And let's see what's this saying. Create class. Create class. No, why is it not? Is this doing create? <laughs> okay, no. I was hoping it will just enter in the uh, all this other stuff that I need to type. Unfortunately, this isn't IntelliJ. Okay, override. Then we're gonna say uh, public void on action string. Ah, that's what am I typing? String name. This is the name of the mapping. Uh, Boolean key pressed, and then float TPF. Okay, so it float TPF is is coming into play here if you want to do modifications when the key is actually pressed. Okay, why is this still complaining to me? Did I type something wrong here? Okay, what did I type that was different? <laughs> I'm a moron. Oh man, that was annoying. Okay, so I, I just I I didn't have ER typed into there, obviously. Um I'm an idiot. Okay. So let's say uh if if key pressed. No, no, no. If the name 
of the mapping equals pause and the key is not pressed which means they had just let it go then what we're going to do is we're going to set enable enabled and we're going to set this enable we're going to set this app state to enable or disable um, based off if it is already enabled so an easy way to do that we can actually just per say take the opposite of is enabled and just flip it like take it, if it is enabled flip the the boolean from true to false and false to true so this will be our little toggle um, and so we'll hit play and if all goes well when we hit P the box will stop rotating so P it stops and we hit P again it goes okay so let's let's take a quick recap here what the heck is going on so down here we've initialized the box we've attached it to the local root node then we have the input manager um, a, a setting up the mapping of what P means which is pause and then we're adding pause to the action listener we're setting up the action listener and then we're saying if pause has been pressed um, then go ahead and actually enable and disable the state then we down here we have the update now this is extremely important to understand and why I do not recommend actually doing geometry scene graph or any other type of logic inside the action listener is that the action listener is always called regardless of whether the scene is uh, or whether the app state is enabled or disabled this is why we can get away with um, toggling the state of this 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 class or this object is because it's always calls called and that's because we're, we're taking the input manager from the actual app and this doesn't have an understanding of what pause state means um, or what enable an app state means so this is why it's always being called every frame and again this is why you don't want to be modifying the actual state of your scene in here um, there's ways to get around it and probably in my next tutorial or my next screencast I'll go over you know how to propagate or um, set up kind of like a, a waiting variable I've actually um, I'm pulling this from the lemur um, GUI um, that I, I read in some in some forum post I don't remember which it was but it's a good way to say okay I want to move this this object and so I can say I want to set the location of this object in my action listener but I don't want it to actually move until I, I update my actual scene um, so this way you don't have to like okay if, if my app state is paused here then don't move it if, if it is it just makes things um, a little bit more cohesive when when building a game so again I don't recommend just blatantly moving stuff in here in the action listener wait for it to actually get to your update loop um, and so yeah this is it's it's a lot to take in I know but basically now we have pause state we have initializing the scene initializing the inputs um, pausing creating a, a pause effect of this uh, we could have just created um, created our own pause state and threw in GUI with that but the actual be on another screencast for introducing GUI probably my next one as well we'll see um, but I'll be introducing the nifty GUI and there's a couple out there like tone God and lemur you can also look up and possibly integrate yourselves but yeah it's it's a lot to take in I, I also want to get into rendering terrain and throwing up a character and doing ray picking so when you click somewhere on a terrain you know exactly where in the scene that you've clicked um, so all the stuff is gonna be coming up we're gonna be building hopefully what's known as pickup sticks uh, this is kind of um there's another uh, 
YouTuber I've I've heavily followed, which is called like Mooseater, and she's um she's made all these different variations of like pickup stick, and it's basically you you take a character, you walk over, when you collide with it and possibly press a key, then the object is removed, and and that object is usually like a a stick. So yeah, that, that's it for the screencast. Uh, more is to come. Hopefully this has been helpful. Um, like this video if you did like it. Subscribe if you want more. And be sure to leave a comment.